Now, I would love to come out and say there are 10 awesome waiver wire guys this week. The reality of the situation is the waiver wire is garbage this week. You have one to two guys that are exciting. Outside of that, I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about like 10 to 12 guys that I know you'll be looking to pick up and trying to convince you why they're bums and you shouldn't. Now, before we get into those guys, I will say Josh Downs, an obvious ad, right? But Josh Downs is rostered in 58% of leagues, so sadly, he cannot be an official ad here. He's only going to be available in those extremely shallow formats, but I know some of y'all will have him out there on the waiver wire. He would be the number one or number two pickup. We'll have someone later on in the video that's very exciting if he is somehow available. He just dominated with targets with 13 alongside Michael Pittman Jr., but let's go over and let's look at the guys that are widely available and the players that you're probably going to be considering picking up, starting off with Jalen Hyatt. Now, I understand why you'd want to go out there and pick up Hyatt, right? Coming off a game where he leads the New York Giants in receiving 109 receiving yards. Obviously, this was a wide receiver that was phenomenal at Tennessee. A rookie wide receiver, you'd assume maybe he's going to continue to get better as the season goes on. The fact of the matter is Jalen Hyatt had six targets. The fact of the matter is he is in one of the worst offenses in the entire NFL. Later on, we'll be looking at defensive streamers for this week. And of course, as we will every week, we're playing the defense going up against the New York Giants. So the reality of the situation is, nope, we are probably not going to be picking up Hyatt. And he would just be a roster clogger here with not a lot of upside. Now, staying in the same game, I mean, if you are looking at the injury to Demario Douglas, I know some people maybe will convince themselves Devontae Park. No, no. Do not waste your time with Parker. Yes, he has 42 receiving yards. Yes, you have a Demario Douglas injury. The low volume passing attack. Very much a cap ceiling in this offense. And you're going to see a trend in this video. We are going to go through. We're going to look at a lot of these guys and horrendous passing offenses. And if you are in that horrible passing offense, even if you could potentially be the wide receiver one, I don't care. I'm not interested. Like Jonathan Mingo, maybe he falls in that same boat of Jalen Hyatt, right? Where with Mingo, this is a rookie wide receiver. You're seeing him come on at the end of the season. I mean, hell, three weeks now with six or more targets, seven targets two weeks ago, six targets last week, six targets this week. Well, yeah, he's sitting there with 23 targets over the past three weeks, but at the same time, the man has like 86 receiving yards. The reason being, this is a horrendous offense with no upside. We want to pass. Now, one of the wide receivers you can pick up here, ladies and gentlemen, I would say the only guy that's rostered in fewer than 50% of leagues that is a viable pickup off the waiver wire this week will be Jaden Reed. If you are looking at Jaden Reed, my issue that I've had all season now with this Green Bay Packers passing offense is that they're just simply spreading the ball out too much. I mean, you are getting 10 plus players touching the football in Green Bay each and every week here. But you've had a lot of these secondary, and I mean like a guy's way at the bottom end of the depth chart. Deal with injuries now in Green Bay that's thinning out the target distribution just a bit, and it's going to condense it to the guys at the very top. And Jaden Reed is that rookie wide receiver that looks like he is expanding his role as the season goes on. While this isn't a great offense, it's a hell of a lot better than what you have in Carolina, than what you have in New England, than what you have in New York. And similar to Josh Downs, this is the profile of someone that we want. Someone that has shown us continued volume over a large sample as a rookie that is not in one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Reed had a great game on Thanksgiving. He had the receiving touchdown. He had eight targets at the same time. So Jaden Reed would be the wide receiver rostered in fewer than 50% of leagues this week that I'd be looking to pick up. One other trap wide receiver before we get to the running backs here is going to be Elijah Moore. Now with Elijah Moore, I mean, he is actually checking a couple of these boxes, right? I mean, he is seeing that volume over a larger sample where two weeks ago against Baltimore, he has seven targets and the receiving touchdown. That's a hell of a feat against the Baltimore Ravens. Two weeks ago, he had seven targets against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He had 60 receiving yards with those as well. And this week he gets you nine targets against the Denver Broncos where you have an Amari Cooper injury, and now Elijah Moore is stepping in to be the wide receiver one on paper for the Cleveland Browns. Now, the issue with this, ladies and gentlemen, is if we were to go through and run through this hypothetical situation, where I tell you, I know for a fact that Amari Cooper is not playing this next week, which we don't know. But if I were to tell you, 
I know Amari Cooper will not be playing for the Cleveland Browns this next week. Are you starting Elijah Moore? The answer to that question in my mind is hell no. If you look at the underdog pick him that we have from a week-to-week perspective with, I mean, Dorian Thompson Robinson, right? The second string quarterback that we have in Cleveland. I mean, they had his passing total at like 180 passing yards every single week. Underdog has had Amari Cooper's pick him at like 43, 44 and a half receiving yards over the past two weeks. This is one of the lowest volume passing attacks in the entire NFL. This is one of the worst matchups you could ask for. Going into this next week, now that Dorian Thompson brought, everybody's injured in this game. This is going to be one of the worst offenses in the NFL. You have an implied team total of 16.75 points for the Cleveland Browns, whereas the Jets are at 16.25. So the Browns and the Jets are about equivalent in terms of offensive output currently. And Elijah Moore is a hell of a lot worse than Zach Wilson. I don't think Elijah Moore is going to come through for you. Now, sticking with the receivers, I will say for tonight, I'm going to be going with Jordan Addison for more than six and a half targets on underdog fantasy under the assumption we have no Justin Jefferson playing. So let's get confirmation that you have no Jefferson. The run to underdog, take the more than six and a half targets for Jordan Addison. And also, if you use promo good flock, you're going to be getting a Justin Fields special pick of more than less than half a total yard for tonight as well. And yeah, promo good flock, 100% a positive match plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers and that Justin Fields special pick him. But let's go over to running back and let's look at Zach Moss. Zach Moss is actually someone that you can pick up here. If you are looking at Zach Moss rostered in 49% of leagues, and this is a running back that while, yeah, this week wasn't great, right? He had 55 rushing yards. He did show us that he's still going to be involved from a week-to-week perspective, even with the healthy Jonathan Taylor. Now, the reason why you would go through and why you would roster Zach Moss isn't because we really are excited about his eight carries from, of course not. The reason you would roster Zach Moss over pretty much any wide receiver that we previously talked about other than like Josh Downs is that if you were to have an injury to Jonathan Taylor, Zach Moss becomes a league winning running back. We saw the ceiling earlier in the season where you had a week with 165 rushing yards and multiple rushing touchdowns. You had another week with 122 rushing yards and a receiving touchdown. Zag Moss has given us multiple weeks this season as a top three running back overall in fantasy. So we've seen the ceiling if an injury were to occur in front of him, and he does have somewhat of a role from week to week perspective. Now, a landmine that maybe you would think fits a similar mold who actually had a better week this week, I'd say, nope, no interest. Royce Freeman is one of those landmines, unlike Zach Moss. We saw what Royce Freeman looks like with no Kyron Williams, and he doesn't have the upside. Specifically as a receiver, in those four games where you had no Kyron Williams, Royce Freeman went out there and, yeah, he averaged about 12 carries per contest, but he had zero receptions for zero yards, zero receiving touch. What else am I supposed to say there? But nonetheless, yeah, you saw the severely capped ceiling. They're going to turn that into a running back by committee regardless. So even though Royce Freeman has the better week where he has 13 carries, 77 rushing yards, and the rushing touchdown, if you're looking at how you want to fill the bottom end of your bench here with waiver wire options, do I want the Royce Freeman player that may give us a slightly higher floor from week to week perspective, but ultimately at the end of the day, the ceiling's going to be severely capped, even if you were to see that Kyron Williams injury? No, I don't want that guy. I'd rather have Zach Moss where, yeah, we're never really starting Zach Moss with the healthy Jonathan Taylor, but the second Taylor goes down, then obviously Zach Moss is a must-start player. Now, the option that we had as our waiver wire tied in last week, we're going to run it back with Pat Frymuth, Only rostered in 48% of leagues. We talked about him last week after the game where he had one reception and one target against the Cleveland Browns. And we were saying, okay, well, look at the snap rates. Ultimately, Pat Frymuth is going to get up. He will get used more. Do not give up on Pat Frymuth. Pat Frymuth is still worth the roster spot. He still has upside for later in the season. I didn't start him this week. I'll tell you that much. I wish I did because he goes out. He has 11 targets, 120 receiving yards. He leads the team in receiving. And I'm going to admit something to you, even though it's pretty embarrassing. Pat Frymuth, the tight end that only has 180 receiving yards so far this season, is a player that I liked coming into the year. 
Because we know historically, outside of this season, you don't really see rookie tight ends produce. You don't really see year two tight ends produce. And Frymuth was on a trajectory that was very reminiscent of a player like George Kittle. Not saying he's the same talent. Of course I'm not. Just putting into historical context what you had with Pat Frymuth's rookie and second year season is in line with those other top end players, the Aaron Hernandez of the world, the George Kittles of the world. So I really like the profile and at the same time he does flash this week. Going into this next week, where can we realistically rank Pat Frymuth? Probably not as a mid tight end one, probably not even as a low end tight end one. I'll probably have Frymuth as like borderline tight end 12-ish, tight end 13. And obviously this is a spot where if he does have another strong performance, back to back weeks of this, I'd be fine moving him up closer to tight end eight, tight end nine. Now let's go over to the quarterback position before we get to the streamers. We'll have some streamers in a second. But if you're looking at someone for the long-term pickup, Jordan Love technically is rostered in 52% of leagues. So really he probably shouldn't be on this list, but nonetheless felt like we need to talk about him a bit. Look great against the Lions, Of course, everybody watched this game, three passing touchdowns. What's interesting is Jordan Love's actually running the ball just a bit, right? Where Jordan Love has had 221 rushing yards this season. He's had two rushing touchdowns. By no means is he Lamar Jackson. Uh, by no means is he Josh Allen. But he's a quarterback that's going to give you, I mean, just a little bit of juice here, right? We've seen the spike weeks now with Jordan Love a few times, where over the past month, you've had 289, 322, 268, and 228 for his passing yardage totals. This is someone also that's averaging two passing touchdowns per game over the past month. Like if you're comparing him to someone like Kenny Pickett, who we'll talk about in just one second, Jordan Love would definitely be the viable pickup in that Pickett's had one game with two or more passing touchdowns his entire NFL career. Whereas um, Jordan Love's doing that pretty much every single week at this point. Now, if you were desperate for a quarterback streamer, two guys you could look at would be Kenny Pickett and Gardner Minshew. Now, the reason we're going to be doing this is primarily the matchups that you have. You have the Pittsburgh Steelers going up against Arizona, where right now, if you're going to be looking at their implied team total, they have an implied team total of 23 points. The only teams that are ahead of the Pittsburgh Steelers here with their totals are Jacksonville, San Francisco, Detroit, Kansas City, Houston, Dallas, and Miami. Obviously, this is 100% a matchup thing when it comes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And honestly, with the Steelers, maybe you'd be a little bit more inclined to go out there and instead start the running backs, right? So if you wanted to go through and if you wanted to pick up Garden Minshew going up against Tennessee, right now you're kind of seeing the same dynamic here where you have about a 22 and a half point applied team total for Indianapolis. They're right in that same range as Pittsburgh. They do have a matchup that may be a little bit better against the Titans, though, for forcing passing volume. So if you were looking for a QB streamer, Minshew could be okay. I'd rank them. Love, Minshew, Pickett. Obviously, Love would be more so the long-term option. And then looking at some defensive streamers as well. There are three teams that stand out. The Jags, Tampa, are rostered in 33 and 30% of leagues. If you are looking at their situations, you have Carolina going to Tampa Bay where Carolina is a five and a half point dog where they have an applied team total of 16.25 points. All three of these opponents have an applied team total of 16.25 points, which is the lowest of any team in the NFL this week. This is why we're playing these defenses. You typically like seeing the high spreads. However, so if you look at the Jags defense, I'd say the Jags defense would be my number one priority waiver wire pickup at DST. If we are streaming, they are rostered in 33% of leagues. However, so they're going to be a little bit tougher to come by. And then the um, bottom basement team that typically you'd never play their defense. Their defense really hasn't done much this entire season. But here you could look at going through and picking up if you really wanted to. Could go pick up Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta, you're going up against the New York Jets. We just saw what the Jets did against the Miami Dolphins where they somehow had a Hail Mary pick six. We don't even want to talk about it. And here Atlanta is favored by two and a half points. The Jets have are tied for the lowest implied team total in the NFL this week. But I think that should be it for this video. So I want to recap the guys that you'd be excited about. Josh Downs, but he's probably already rostered in your league. 
Jaden Reed at wide receiver, Zach Moss at running back, Pat Frymuth at tight end, Jordan Love at quarterback, and then some streaming options. The vast majority of options on the waiver wire this week will be landmines, and you're probably better to just go through and avoid them if you can. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you. I really hope you have a great day. If you've not done so already, hit that like button, subscribe. And if you wanted to follow me on that Jordan Addison, more than six and a half targets on Underdog Fantasy. Like I said, we're going to wait for confirmation that Justin Jefferson's out. Hammer the six and a half more than and promo good full lock, 100% a positive match, plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers. And on top of that, that Justin Field special pick of more than less than half a total yard for tonight. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you. I really hope you have a great day and really hope you get to see you out in the live stream later tonight.